War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. After an epic campaign that marked the longest and most expensive presidential race in U.S. history, voters are heading to the polls today in what election officials are expecting to be record turnout numbers. Democratic nominee Barack Obama is leading Republican John McCain in every national poll. One of the key battleground states is the race in Pennsylvania. Democracy Now! co-host Juan Gonzalez is on assignment for the New York Daily News in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Juan. How are you, Amy? It's good to have you with us, um, at least on the telephone. Talk about what's happening in this key state today. Yeah, well, the polls in Scranton opened at, uh, at 7 a.m. And uh, in, in one polling place here in, uh, uh, in the Green Ridge section of Scranton, where I am, there were about 20 people online, uh, unusual uh, for, uh, uh, for this uh, voting place. Uh, but not a huge uh, turnout, and uh, uh, the, the Scranton is is really the ba one of the battlegrounds in this battleground state. Obviously, John McCain has has basically said he's got to win he's got to win Pennsylvania if he has any hope uh, of winning this election. And Scranton is a town uh, about 92 percent white that has voted Democratic in the past. It went 56 percent for John Kerry in 2004. Uh, but many uh, suspect that this is really the sort of the, the Hillary Clinton uh, uh, Democratic blue collar voters. And the, the real question as to whether Obama can can match that if he doesn't uh, match Kerry, get close to it, uh, then it would be a real surprise here. Uh, and uh, but the the voters, uh, the amazing thing about Pennsylvania is that people have been inundated now with ads, commercials, uh, even late into the night last night, a uh, huge number of commercials, especially from other uh, and not from the parties, uh, not from the Kim McCain campaign or Obama campaign themselves, but the Republican Party, the National Riflemen's Association, huge ads. Uh, the, the, uh, defend freedom, uh, defeat Obama, uh, and uh, so that it, uh, the people of the state have been deluged w with ads uh, by both campaigns in the past uh, months. Juan, uh, you worked at the Philadelphia Daily News for years. Um, can you talk about the changes you've seen and what's, what area Scranton represents, why you're focused on Scranton? Well, because uh, Scranton is, uh, I mean, in Philadelphia, it's that there will be a huge turnout uh, for uh, uh, for uh, Barack Obama. The main concern there, obviously, Philadelphia has a long history of machine breakdowns and problems uh, on Election Day with voters being able to, to vote. Uh, but in Scranton, which is uh, in the northeast section of the state and is uh, sort of a, a Rust Belt, former industrial area, obviously the, the original hometown of Joe Biden, uh, it, is, uh, it has long been a Democratic uh, bastion. But again, because it is uh, uh, so overwhelmingly white and because there have been problems with uh, racism, in this part of Pennsylvania in the past, there is a concern that many of those Democratic voters will not uh, vote for uh, Barack Obama. Uh, but I think the, the Obama campaign, uh, we, uh, I drove by the, uh, the Obama campaign headquarters uh, this, uh, this morning, uh, full, uh, heavily staffed with young people, a lot of them college students who have, who have come uh, into the state to help out from, uh, uh, from Binghamton, New York, from SUNY Binghamton, a huge contingent there that is, has been volunteering here. It's not too far from, from Scranton across the New York State border. Uh, so they've got a lot of college kids that are working. And, uh, and I think that uh, the issue here for, for Obama is just having a, a better than 50 percent showing. Uh, and I think that if that's the case, then he shouldn't have any problem with Pennsylvania. Uh, if there is a big turn against him in Scranton, it could be a, a problem throughout the rest of the state, but reflect the problem throughout the rest of the state. Not that New York is a swing state. I know you'll be coming back here, Juan, to vote. But I went to my polling place this morning at around 5.30 in the morning. It's supposed to open at 6. At around 6.15, 6.20, one of the election people came outside and said, we don't have the key 
for the machines. So everyone got very agitated. There were hundreds of people online already um, at 6 o'clock. By the time I left, left, great confusion inside. We use the old-fashioned lever machines. It may be the last time. I think they're called the Shroops. Um, the Shroop machine. The yeah. Shroop <laughs> ma machine. Uh, by the time I left, it was longer than a city block, the line, uh, around a oh, quarter to seven. I mean, I've never seen this many people trying to vote. Uh, yeah, well, they said, again, here, this is, Scranton is not a, a, a very big city, and uh, so they don't expect to have uh, problems with uh, with lack of machines. I mean, in this polling place alone, there must be about uh, eight machines that are using the optical scan machines here. The sec I think the second major election, they're using optical scan machines, uh, and everything seems to be operating smoothly. But in the big cities, yes, if the election officials do not prepare and have enough uh, machines and enough poll workers that are going to to be major problems uh, in places like Philadelphia and New York uh, uh, and, and some of the other big cities. Well, Juan, thanks for joining us, and I look forward to seeing you tonight when uh, Democracy Now! gathers once again here at the 100-year-old firehouse, this landmark building, broadcasting a five-hour special on this election night, on this night uh, that will be clearly historic, um, whatever happens all over this country. And uh, want to let our viewers and listeners— <laughs> Yeah, I hope that you're done um, and that you're back safely from Scranton. Uh, I want to let our listeners and viewers know you can come here to democracynow.org. We'll be uh, video streaming, and you can find out at your station, your public radio and television station, if they'll be running this broadcast. Tomorrow we'll be running an expanded two-hour broadcast uh, in the morning, 8 to 10 Eastern Standard Time, tonight 7 to midnight Eastern Standard Time. Uh, lots of people will be in and out of the studio as we uh, look at talk to people around the country. We'll be looking at obstacles to voting and the record number of people who have voted will be getting response from all the key states and will be getting response around the globe. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report, as we continue to look at this record number of voters heading to the polls today. We're going to look now at some of the 153 initiatives on ballots in 36 states. The ballot initiatives this year cover a wide range of issues and are funded by a variety of interests. Voters around the country will weigh in today on how their state should deal with matters, well, as diverse as clean energy, children's health insurance, stem cell research, predatory lending, affirmative action, immigrant rights, abortion, gay marriage, adoption, nonviolent drug offenses, income tax, treatment of farm animals. Christina Wilfor is with us now. She's the executive director of the Ballot Initiative Strategy Center that tracks ballot initiatives across the country and supports progressive ballot initiative campaigns. She joins me on the phone from, well, are you voting right now? Christina? <laughs> Luckily, I just got out of there. The polls opened here in Washington, D.C. I'm on Capitol Hill at 7. There was already about 200 people in line at 710. And uh, luckily, they pulled the T through Zs um, ahead, so I was able to skirt much of that. But it's going to be a long day here in the district. Well, why don't you uh, talk about what you see as some of the key ballot initiatives? There's so much focus on the presidential race that I think when people um, go to their polling precinct and they look at the polling machine and they see a ballot initiative on it, some will not even know what it's about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it certainly, especially this year, gets a little lost in some of the things that are of, you know, more dominance. It's, it's fascinating, especially in the last week, you see more coverage related to some of the more eclectic and controversial kinds of issues around animal rights or the drug reform or criminal justice issues, and those are an annual part of the ballot. But what uh, is a little lost in that attention to those measures is some real fundamental issues that we believe are present this cycle because people really have big problems and want big solutions around health care, clean and reliable energy, um, and issues that are more core to uh, what people wake up in the night worrying about. And so um, from some that you mentioned around children's health care, um, home care authorities, creating those in Washington and Missouri, stem cell research, and then everything from alternative fuels in California to clean and solar
solar energy, um, oil severance tax. I mean, there's a variety of issues that are really fundamental to the kinds of things that we know voters are worried about and want to see real progress on. Christina Wilfer, we're going to break and then come back. We'll also be joined by Richard Kim of The Nation and look more closely at some of these ballot initiatives. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. Back in a minute. You know what you gotta do. They are 